Last time on The Incredible Party! The Trinity confrontation comes to an end with no fatalities. The party successfully chasing off Brick and his underlings, and finding a treasure trove of magical items yet to be divvied up among Chip and the other members. Quickly fleeing the scene of the fight, the party briefly stops to reassure a denizen inhabitant that the area is now safe and quiet for now. Kylie and Seisha Dahl are sitting in a lesser-used section of the castle basement, alone and in the dark. Kylie, why are we sitting in the dark? I didn't want us to wake anyone else. Or are you pouting because your friends didn't want to share any of the new toys? <sighs> I can give you something. Share a little more of myself with you. Would you like that? I... Yes. What is it? Seychelles all waves their hand and it becomes dark. Darker than dark. Close your eyes. Kylia feels a coldness deep within her head. So cold it almost hurts. Now open them. I... I can see... everything. And that's not all I have for you. It is the early morning of the day after the Trinity House battle. Uh, you've all agreed to meet up at Toggles and Sprockets. Hellcruck seems to be the first one to arrive a little early this morning. But even uh, by the time you get there, Hellcruck, the, the shop seems like it's still a, a buzz with activity. You know, the lower section of the building of Toggles and Sprockets, it serves as the, the shop, right? There's this rustic wooden door with an ornate handle and this grid of like nine smaller windows serves as, as the shop's entrance, right? With a large display window that houses you know, several items, but set very prominently on display is this incredibly intricately crafted compass, a compass that once upon a time caught Kylie a Seisha doll's eye. Uh, but the floors above the shop are of course the living quarters for the numerous toggle sprockets that flit around uh, in a daily activity. It's clear that Ruby and Flint toggle sprockets artificer ingenuity has been put to good use though, adding additions to the original footprint of the building. You look at this large tower that higher than any surrounding buildings by two or three floors, clearly, you know, aftermarket <laughs> additions and constructions <laughs> to this, this building as the Toggle Sprocket family grows, so too does the building. Uh, it adds, you know, still minimal, but very necessary extra space for their 12 children. And Hellcock, as you enter uh, the swinging door, you know, a little chime rings and uh, also a pre-recorded message. Well, hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome to Toggles and Sprockets. Inside the the layout is like, a, this is a very long and kind of narrow building, right? It seems like the shop, is, like it, it's got this cluttered yet still orderly feeling, um, kind of a, like a, everything has its place, but that place might not be convenient kind of way. A dozen or so customers are, are milling about, you know, browsing up and down the aisles still. Um, you see three young looking gnomes bearing a striking resemblance to Opal are attending uh, to customers, they're restocking shelves, perhaps tidying areas of the shop. Uh, these are of course some of Opal's siblings. I'm not sure that you would have met any of to uh, Opal's family, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Opal, what, uh, are you, what are you doing early this morning? Are you down in the shop as well or are you still maybe uh, sleeping in a little bit? I don't think Opal would be sleeping in. I think she'd be maybe sitting on the stairs or kind of milling around. It's not her shift to work, but just kind of watching for some of the group to arrive, uh, knowing where she stashed the items and uh, and just kind of looking out for the crew, as it were. And seeing and, and kind of hearing the buzz of the shop, seeing if anyone's talking about anything that happened last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, well, your siblings that are currently on shift are Pearl, Beryl, and Micah. Uh, and you do, yeah, you, from your vantage point, you spot Hellcruck as he enters. I, so I would say probably of your normal clientele, Hellcruck maybe stands out a little bit. Um, uh, you know, just his, his kind of wiry, orcish frame and the minimal amount of clothing. You know, I would imagine Hellcruck's a bit of a minimalist uh, in many departments. I don't know how much, what does, 
Hellcrack wear normally, like just like a normal like monk robe kind of stereotypical a thing. Cloth. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Uh, he's very practical when it comes to clothing. He's he's not interested in fashion or um, any frills. So things that are loose enough to not restrict his movement, because uh, he does like to. Although he looks a little bit worse for wear and and a bit aged, he's he's still pretty spry. So loose fitting, you know, basic clothes. Uh, no additional adornments like many of the customers here. Uh, I mean, some of them are even wearing uh, maybe some little trinkets that they would have picked up in the shop and are their repeat customers, which, of course, is is a lot of the business in Toggles and Sprockets. And, uh, Opal, so your, your father, Flint, is uh, behind the main counter um, showing a patron some wares. And, you know, you see how, both of you, how and Opal, you kind of see Flint pick up uh, a pair of sanding stones. They're nearly identical to the ones that Opal has provided uh, the party with. And Flint kind of taps on one of them to activate it for this, you know, showing this this customer what they do. You all hear that fi- familiar, followed by uh, an- another pre-recorded message. Are your items constantly breaking in need of repair? Are you in need of a unique gift for a loved one? Then shop at Toggles and Sprockets, where we can mend dang near anything and offer all kinds of tinkerings. And you, you know, Flint just kind of taps it again in a few different places. Oh, well there, you just, uh, you could just go switch it to silent mode. Uh, if you wanted ad free, there's a monthly subscription cost for unlimited calls across Storm Cape. And he's like dealing with the customer and showing him how, how these things work. But yeah, Opal, you immediately spot Hellcrack as he enters the, enters the shop. So Hellcrack, um, also probably looks around. I think probably not too difficult to, um, pick out Opal with her bright hair. And he's gonna quickly uh, give a nod to her and and make his way over. And if there's if there's nobody sort of in with an earshot, uh, he he's gonna he'll just um, talk to her there. But otherwise, he might um, sort of motion to to step off to the side somewhere where they can speak a little bit more privately without being overheard. Uh, so Opal, I I was thinking last night. Um... You know, these these magic items, we don't really know where they came from. I mean, uh, who, uh, you know, what if they didn't, what if they didn't belong to them and they're stolen from somebody, maybe somebody powerful, somebody we don't want to get on their bad side. Uh, oh, so we can be powerful? That'd be awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, they do seem like excellent items, but um, I wonder if we should maybe try and figure out, you know, I was thinking... Uh, given your family what they do for business, um, maybe they might have a bit of knowledge about where unique items like this may have, may have come from, whose hands they may have passed. Um... Do you think I could maybe ask your, your mom and dad? I could just say, you know, maybe these were left in a carriage, um, and no one's come to claim them. I was wondering if your mom and dad might have seen them, or know who they belong to. Okay. Um, I do like that story better than just, like, telling them the truth. Oh, no. No, no, I I don't. We shouldn't tell them the truth. Yeah. I don't think that they know what we did last night, and I want to keep it that way. So, do we want to wait for everybody, or... My dad's kind of busy. I don't know, uh... Uh, maybe it'd be easier before the whole group gets here. Just get get it over with. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's go upstairs and we'll go find my mom. Also, this is Pearl and Beryl and Micah. Guys, this is Hellcruck. Um, they're my younger siblings. A few of them. There's a, a few more. Oh yes. Uh. Well, it's it's, it's nice to meet you. Um, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> Though he's gonna give you give you a wave. Uh, Micah seems very shy. Okay, let's go find mom. So I will head up the stairs and uh, have Hellcrook follow me. I feel like he might be a little big for the space, but, you know. <laughs> the main floor, the second floor, like our main floor would be a little bit of a more roomier, roomier than the bunk beds and the uh, teetering towers above that. Um, mom? Whoa? I'll look for her in the kitchen. I mean, as you approach and you call, uh, just poking her head out of the out of the doorway for the kitchen into the hallway. Uh, yeah, Ruby responds. Your mother responds. Oh, 
Hello, uh, oh, who, well, who's your friend? This is Hellcruck. Hellcruck, this is Ruby Togglesprocket, my mom. Oh, hi. Hi there, uh, Mrs. Togglesprocket. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, I I'm friends with Opal here, um, and, you know, I was asking her, uh, um, since, you know, you and your family are in this business, I, I have a, a question. Uh, I need your help. I don't know if you might be able to help, but I, I have these these unique, very unique items. Maybe um, I'll just show you. And yeah. I'll, like, scurry off up to my room to go grab the bag of goods. And, um, yeah, I would Opal know if there's, like, a room with a door or something where we could just kind of, like, show them to my mom without it being a huge scene around the table. <laughs> like, because my little siblings can spread rumors and gab and stuff. Too, <laughs> right, so. right. Yeah, absolutely. Your parents would have, like, a, a you know, an office in which they would... Probably maybe on the in the back of the first floor though, not up in your living quarters. You know, like the shop's office. I come back to the to the second floor, main floor, and I'm like, huh, okay. Um, so I don't know if he fully told you, but we should probably show you these in private, if that's okay. Well, sure, dear. And she just kind of like finishes like drying her hands, and then discards the 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 dish towel in her hands, and will follow you. Uh, well, lead the two of you to their office downstairs. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mrs. Togglesprocket, I, the reason I ask, uh, these kind of were just left behind in a carriage and, and nobody's come back to claim them. I'm not sure who they belong to, but uh, I th I thought of you um, and, and your family and your business here. You kind of are in the, the this, this sort of market. So maybe you would have seen these or know who they belong to. Oh, dear. Well, uh, we'll certainly be able to figure out who they belong to. I'll just simply scan the MIN number. Uh, scan the what? Oh, darn it. I should have looked for the min number. I know better than that. And uh, so Ruby in, the, in, in your parents' office, she's uh, retrieved, like, I mean, it looks like uh, half of a, a magic wand that's, like, suspended or, or implanted into, like, a handle, basically. And she kind of like, fiddles with it and then it starts to emits this light. Well, well, hand me the items. I pull out the ring first. Okay. So she'll put it in her palm and she sees she passes the light over it. And she has like a quizzical look. Does it again. Uh, let's try another one. She set the ring down on, on, on her desk. Okay. Um, and I grab the belt. And she, same thing. She like kind of gives it like a scan. Uh, the same kind of look. And then she, you know, continues. She'll scan every one of the items you have. My goodness, the, the, these mints have been magically scrubbed. Uh oh. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure, uh, Hellcrack, if, if Opal has explained to you, but Opal, you certainly know this. Every every magic item, you know, uncommon or or or, or higher uh, higher of rarity is assigned a mint number. It's how we in the city and the uh, the arcanists, our academia, keep track of some of the more powerful items that are bought and purchased. Of course, they want their cut of every every item uh, of a significant power and. Well, this is how they're tracked, but where did you, you said you find these in a carriage? Oh, yeah, uh, it's the weirdest thing. I, uh, unique items like this, usually the owner would come back and claim them, but nobody showed up. Well, yeah, I think you should take these to the Arcanist Academia and report this immediately. This is, you're not supposed to tamper. This is against city law. You can't tamper with a, a magical item like this. Yes, yes, I, I agree. I, I think that's a great plan. Um, what do you Thank mean, you. tamper? Couldn't I just, like, study them and learn from them a little bit, Mom? They're really well made. Look at them. Yo, yes, they, they do look exquisitely crafted. Uh, these aren't quite the items that your father and I uh, tinker with. Um, you know, we're usually more mundane and not usually weaponry either, but... Yeah, but look, I was able to attune to this last night, and I put the circlet on. So it's okay. two copper wires, and then, like, as I put it on, the little target in the middle glows a little spark in it. It's pretty cool. Like, they're not dysfunctional. I didn't say that they were broken. If you're going to use these, then we need to get a min applied to them, and they're registered in your names. Yeah, I I think your mom has a point, um, uh, Opal. That, that we'll, we'll definitely... Uh... Bring them over and, and make sure they're dealt with properly. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your help, Mrs. Togglesprocket. Uh, 
Uh, my pleasure. I'd be a friend of one of my kids is, is a friend of ours. Okay, so you're saying I shouldn't be wearing this out in public? It's just so pretty. I'm just saying you should report immediately to the academia and they can reapply the men. Okay. Will they tell us who the previous owners were? Uh, they may have some means to, uh, to, to figure that out even after it's been scrubbed, but I, I don't think so. Will we get in trouble for being the new owners just by happenstance? Because they were, you know, they are lost and found. I, I mean, there may be an associated fee to reapply the min number. That's going to be on the discretion of the clerk that you deal with. You got any clerk friends? Perhaps I can uh, send a message ahead. Might ease the process for you. Come on, you know I like to tinker and toggle. <laughs> All right. Uh, just send me send me a message about uh, which clerk to go to when you get a minute, when you talk to him. Of course, I'll make sure my friend is uh, is working today. Thanks, Mom. And I give her a big hug and I love you. Now, now, back to whatever you have to do today. I take the bag of stuff, but I'm wearing the circlet. Okay. <laughs> In defiance. Rumkey, you wake up in the morning after the Trinity House brawl with... An unfamiliar feeling for a dwarf. It's like the feeling of a hangover. Your head feels kind of fuzzy, like almost as if it, it, like your head feels larger than it normally is. Like this, you have this extended awareness, like reaching out around you. Uh, there's kind of like this underlying buzzing sound in your ears. You wince slightly as you move uh, at the, a pain on your inner wrist. You know, rubbing a hand over the tattoo you have there. Uh, of the two cross axes, it feels warm and the surrounding skin is red. The ink of it is like this deep black as though it was freshly applied. You know, and when a day ago, the fading mark was just another graying blemish on your body. I mean, you, you're covered in tattoos of an age of which not even you know, right? Having lost your memory. But touching it, you know, recalls flashes of, of that, the, your, your, this, the vision or, or whatever it was that you had in the Trinity House of the figure applying it, calling it Clangadin's mark. And you just know that there's there's power in that mark. There's like this this new power in you that's not entirely unfamiliar. But very quickly, you know, the buzzing subsides and your, your head clears. The warmth in your arm kind of fades away, but you feel good. So the tattoo stays in a more of a clean state or does it fade in and fade back out? The tattoo still looks as if it was newly applied. And does the name Kaladin sort of that I I heard that in my vision? Yeah, the the whoever it was that was tattooing you in what you saw in the Trinity House used the name and said this is Clangadin's mark. Okay, so I, I reach over at the little table and uh, that I by between Frank and I's bed and it's it's Frank has a little piece of paper and stuff, I sort of rip it off. I'd write down Clangadin's name, put a little question mark by it, and uh, fold it up and put it in my pocket. And I, I keep staring down at my arm, at the axes and rubbing it, trying to make any kind of sense of it. Is Frank still there? No, Frank has gone up early and gone off to work. So I'll just get up, do a little stretching, you know, lean, do a little lunges, get ready to go for the day. Do a I know squawk. I wanted to squawk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, this is uh, too good. <laughs> head down to the uh, out the door and down to the toggles and sprockets, sort of heading down the, the road, saying good morning to people as I go by. Trying to, I'm trying to still reestablish myself a little bit. So, you know, giving everybody a wink and a point. How you doing today, Sally? You looking good? Hey, what's going on? You know, and uh, work my way down through to through the town. Kali is walking down the street. Her skin is tinged a green, which you all know means joy. So she's feeling happy. And next to her is the image of a woman who um, is taller than Kylia, has long silver hair that floats above her head and are all about her. And she um, has these deep, piercing blue eyes. And she has a dress that flows from orange to red to purple that swirls around her as she moves. Hi, Ramki! Hey, how you doing? Hey, you heading heading down there? Yes, we are. Hey, uh, I, I sort of point. Who's this? This, Rumki, is Seishodal. Or how we see her. 
Nice, nice to meet you, or nice to see you finally, I guess. Well, that's not actually me. It's just a projected image. Oh, so that's not what you really look like? It's how Kylia sees me. Ah. Glad I can't project people. <laughs> we can do other things, not just people. We can make an image just appear. Yeah, it's pretty nifty. That might come in handy someday. Yeah, Seisha Doss taught us new tricks last night. Oh yeah, what else? Uh, well, we can see in the dark. Like in the dark dark. That's pretty cool. Can I? Can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> As I didn't know already. <laughs> if you would like to enter into an agreement with me. Oh yeah? Like what? You wanting some money or something? No, no, a, a much more permanent agreement. I'll tell you what, I'll teach you how to box, you teach me how to see things really dark areas. That's not quite how that works. No, this is a, this is a negotiation. I meant an agreement like the one that Kylie and I have. Eh, I don't need to get into all that kind of paperwork. Hey, we gotta go uh, to the Toggles and Sprockets. We'll, we'll talk about this later. I do not need to know how to box. Everybody should know how to box. It's fundamental. They're waiting for us, right? We should go. It's fundamental. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And it's mental. <laughs> fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to physical. <laughs> <laughs> That does make more sense. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, and I take off down the road if you want to follow. We are following. How far is it from where we are to Toggles and Sprockets? Like how many minutes? Uh, I'd say you probably intersected, you know, within the tan, so Seychelles could still be up as you enter into the, the shop, of course. So the three of you now... now also, to be clear, though, it doesn't come with any sound, so, like, they're still not seeing Seisha Doll speak. They're just hearing her voice, right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't visualize these things unless you tell me. You need to let me know what's going so, on on the other end. Seisha Doll's voice is basically still coming from Kylia. Is her mouth moving when she but talks? No, it's never. Not moving. when Seisha Doll talks, no. <laughs> So it's still creepy. <laughs> yeah. One might say it's even more now? creepy now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I much prefer a disembodied voice than a disembodied voice. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the three of you enter the shop and you hear the little the little ding and the hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome to Toggles' Sprockets. And again, yeah, you see the activity. Uh, you don't, no sign of Opal and Hellcruck is there, and kind of in the back office, just finishing up as you as you arrive. But one of uh, one of Opal's siblings, kind of approach, you know, walks up to you to to greet you. He's kind of around the the beginning of the door, and he's got his like gaze uh, averted, uh, kind of shyly. He says, "Hello, welcome to Toggles and Sprockets. Hope you buy something so our family can eat. Thanks. Bye." And then starts to <laughs> shuffle away. Wouldn't Kylia know the some of the siblings having been friends with Opal Kylia for a while? Might, yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Kylia, you, you this is Micah. Classic Micah. Classic Micah, yeah, yeah. He didn't look up, so he doesn't even know it's hers, so you know. Yeah, I know. He like he keeps his like a <laughs> gaze shyly averted. Micah uh looks a little uh more kind of a little sickly as if he's like recovered from something. Maybe he looks like he's still a little a little skinny, maybe a little smaller than you might think, even for a gnome, that he might be, but he's clearly very shy and quite young. Hi, Micah. How are you feeling today? And he like finally, like quickly glances up and seeing, recognizing you. Oh, hi, Kylie. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine. Are you gonna buy something? Maybe later. Uh, where's Opal? Oh, I'll, I'll go and find her. And he like will scamper off and will retrieve uh, Opal and, and Hellcock. The two of you hear like a, no a quiet little tiny knock on the office door, like <laughs> barely audible. Hello? Opal? Yeah? Kylie is here. Okay. Thanks, bro. Ask her if she's going to buy something. 
You don't ask our friends if you're going to buy something. What, Dad always says you have to make the sale. Don't listen to Dad. Do your own thing. All right, let's go, Hellcrack. Thanks, Mom. Oh, all right. Just make sure you get those mins reapplied. And that's when I do the hug and I love you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Leland, what did you say was the name of the place that she wanted to take him to? Uh, the Arcanist Academia. And you know, um, their uh, like guild hall is in the Cognition District. As we as we walk down the uh, the short hallway, Opal's gonna say, "If only I could figure out how to remove mins, I would like to learn that." <laughs> Well, I don't know, Opal. It seems like something you might get in trouble for messing around with. Whatever. I'm not putting any stupid men on this stuff. Well, no, no. I mean, I, I think we should talk to the rest of the gang before we do anything, but... You know, sometimes you just gotta tell your parents what they want to hear, right? Oh, for sure. Look at this circle, it's so cute! It just, like, matches my style perfectly. It, it is nice. I, I, I agree. I... I like her. I think there's some stuff for you in this bag. Oh, we'll have to divvy it up. Uh... Oh, let's tell the others. Let's go. And we'll go out. Hey, Kylia. Sorry that Micah was bugging you to buy stuff again. That's okay. He usually does. The two of you, Open Helga, you'd see this figure with Kylia and Rumpke. Oh, um. Uh, hello, hello there. Uh, nice to meet you. This is Seisha Doll. Oh. Mm. Opal pretty quickly realizes it's a illusion of some sort. I don't think Hellcruck uh, puts two and two together quite so quickly, being that he doesn't know as much about magic as maybe Opal does. Hmm. She doesn't look like I think she looks. Just saying. Hellcruck sticks his hand out um, to try and be polite and, and shake Seychelles' hand. <laughs> <laughs> she can't shake your hand, silly. We projected her. She's an illusion. Oh, wow. Well, bravo. It's very well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, but she's so colorful and like... Isn't she beautiful? I don't know. I just pictured her wearing all black and having like black hair and like gray oh, skin no. and like talking Look like at this. Her. She's so pretty. Yeah, you made her really pretty, though. I mean, good job. Well, that's how she looks to us. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have some information to discuss. Where do we want to go? I've got got the stuff. Hold up the bag. Yeah, we, we should probably um keep, keep it quiet. Let's, let's get out of here. I'm sick of being under my parents' listening ears. Yeah, we got a place to go uh, look at this stuff more closely without... Anybody seeing us? Well, there's a park down the street. All right. Good enough for me. Is there a park down the street? <laughs> yeah, I mean there there is a there is a little a large greener area um, before the the hedge maze actually that Opal's quite familiar with. I'm gonna take him to my favorite tree. As we walk out the door and we all start heading away, Seychelle Doll just disappears. So the four of you don't quite make it to uh, the exit before you kind of spot outside of the shop. Uh, a city guard is strolling by, and he stops and looks into the display case momentarily. Um, but there's kind of uh, like a brief second he's peering at, clearly looking at the the compass, but with a quick flash of like dark green and the pale yellow of his, his city guard uniform. Uh, he enters the shop, you know, the chime and that recorded message again. He kind of surveys the shop. I mean, your four of you are kind of standing right in front of him, basically. And you see, he's got a small little notebook in his hand. He consults it. And as he, his eyes land on you, Opal, he kind of nods, flips it closed, and approaches you. Uh, well, excuse me, Miss Toggle Sprocket, what is that curious looking item in the display window? What does Hellcruck know about this, if anything? Probably nothing. Um, Probably not if you hadn't been inside the shop much. This is like the Ruby and Flint's like prized creation. Um, but Opal, you, you definitely know that what's in this display case is not the real compass. They wouldn't just leave this very pricey, very ornate and exquisite item. Like this is a replica of the compass, which they put on display as a show of their ingenuity and craftsmanship, not to sell. The real compass is secure, like away hidden. Did this, this guard, I know that I've talked to him before. Did he tell me his name before? And I'm just 
You don't rec- you don't recognize this guard. In fact, none of you recognize this guard. Oh, okay. I thought it was the same one that we gave the place to. Okay. That, sir, is called the heart's desire. It's a compass. He, he kind of, like, looks at it longingly. Then he kind of shakes his head, remembering why he's here. Oh, well, well, my apologies. I'm not here for that. I'm here for, actually, guard business. Um, I'm Constable Lilton. Uh, a pleasure to finally meet you. I believe you spoke to my superior a few days ago uh, about the Founders' Day incident. Is there somewhere private we can speak? Because he kind of looks at, you know, the rest of the party. Um, why? Can't we just speak freely amongst ourselves? I have some questions. Uh, who are the rest of your compatriots? Hi, I'm Rumpke. You might have saw me. Uh, you might have saw me at uh, some of the fights. If you're into that kind of thing, right? I can assure you, I have not. But he will shake your hand. Mm. Oh, you ought to come. And but as soon as he walked in, I will try to hide if I can, like hide a shelf or something. Okay, yeah, you can uh, absolutely make a stealth check. And as he walked in, he was like distracted by the compass, so it's not a disadvantage or anything. Twenty-three. There you go. So I'm like, yeah, so yeah, he's a rumpke. This is Hellcruck, and that's, um, uh, hmm, yeah. Can I take you back to my parents' office? He, you see him consult his notebook when you mention Hellcruck, and he flips through some pages. Ah, yes, uh, Mr. Tread, you've got quite the record here, I see. I've looked into you. Right, uh, you know, that, that was, a uh, that was a different me in, in times past. I, I, I've, I've changed my ways and... A lifetime ago, officer. Yeah. I mean, constable. He kind of, you know, nods. And you hear, like, a quick bustle. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, and you see, like, Flint comes over seeing the guard speaking to, to his daughter. Well, hey there, hi there, hold there. Uh, what seems to be the off uh, problem, officer? Well, sir, uh, it seems that Mr. Thomas Brockett here was involved in a, a bit of an altercation on Founders Day, and an eyewitness puts her near the scene of a secondary incident at the buyer's market. A very serious incident that has put my superior in critical condition. I have no idea what you speak of. The parade, yes, but the buyer's market? Well, it seems I I spoke to a very friendly mail courier who uh, puts a pink-haired gnome at the scene uh, shortly before an explosion. Yeah, I was trying to fix the fence. Well, I'm afraid uh, whatever job you may have done has been obliterated by another bombing. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm just a perfectionist and a tinkerer, and I saw a board loose. I was just being a good citizen, sir. I don't think uh, my daughter has anything to do with this. She wouldn't cause an explosion. Please, sir, I'm simply asking questions. I'm not accusing anybody. Okay, like you said, do we need to talk in private, or are we doing this right here, sir? I'm certainly happy if you want to step into your office, as you suggested. Dad, can we use the office? I don't like the way this is sounding. The constable kind of motions for the lot of you to accompany. Yeah, Hellcrux, Hellcrux, um, all... <laughs> Although he does not like being involved in any questioning from the members of the city <laughs> guard, um, he's, he's going to try and support his friend. Kylia will continue to hide, but skulk closer to the office to be able to hear what's going on. Rumpke starts walking towards the door, and then he sees that Hellcrux going back, so he sort of steps back and forth a second, and then he puts his head down a little bit, and then turns and follows Hellcrux. Like, like he didn't really want to be involved, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, now yeah. he feels that since Hellcrook made that decision, he has to, uh, sorry, this is, this is a toggles and sprockets business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're all kind of ushered back into this office, and it's a little cramped in here with a lot of you in here. Kylie, you're able to um, slink up to the closed door and put an ear pressed against it to, to listen to the conversation. And uh, Constable Lilton will, will continue. So, uh, I ask again, you were all uh, at the incident on Founders Day? Yeah, I was there. I saw it. Yes, um, it, I was almost mortally wounded, and, and uh, the, the gentleman that I work for, I'm quite uh, good friends with, uh, he, he was wounded quite badly, almost didn't make it. It was, it was terrible. He flips through pages again. Uh, yes, that, that would be uh, Lehan of Lehan Carriage Services, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, he was wounded quite badly. Um, I also should mention that uh, 
that I saved his life. One of my favorite horses uh, got flipped over too. The important part is he I healed him and he is alive. I was being a good citizen yet again. Yes, please. Uh, there's no need to be so defensive here. I'm simply asking questions. Okay, I'm sorry. I was just trying to cooperate even at the parade when I talked to the guard. I was just trying to cooperate. I'm sorry. I get nervous. Do you have something in your book there about the big thing with the head that got ripped off and stuff? You got that in your little notepad there? In fact, I do, as he kind of brandishes you with like a smirk. Uh, he turns back to Opal again. You mentioned to uh, Sergeant Vepper uh, about this monstrous creature and that a friend of yours, uh, you named him uh, Hellcrook, I see. You said, Hellcrook, you, you could end, uh, we would have been able to recognize the the new head. As he looks at his notes, reading it kind of quizzically. <laughs> new head uh, uh, of which this creature adopted, you would certainly recognize it. Well, yeah, I, I think so. Probably. Um, quite a unusual thing, I must say, but uh, yeah, it kind of seared into my memory. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, it was quite an event for all of us, quite frankly. Thank goodness none of the founders uh, uh, perished in the, in the attacks. Now, at, at the time, uh, Miss Toggles Braga, you, you mentioned to Sergeant Vepper that you you couldn't give him or supply him with any additional names of those that w others that witnessed it, uh, this this creature. Uh, is that still the case? Do you have any additional information you could provide for me since the days of, of its happening? Um, yeah, because I know Rumpke saw it. He was there, and Hellcrack was there. That's who I was talking about. We went together. I see, okay. Um, now, you also, uh, I hear, uh, mentioned a, a, a fake uh, Ike Peral. Uh, do you have any additional information on him? He may still be in danger. Uh, no, sir. He ran away um, into the crowd. I lost him. But I was basically... Um, by the parole explosion, and so I was trying to help him and see if he's okay, and then I saw that he was fake, but okay, and ran away. Hmm, hmm. I see. Really weird. Were the other families fake? I I'm not sure I haven't quite gotten to my uh, to that in my investigation here, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you all. Um, we're spread a little thin here in the aftermath of, of these bombings. I mean, that's three now, uh, a third happening just last night in the in the denizen. Uh, initial investigations are, are pointing towards gang activity. Connection to the Peaceful Patriots, well, we haven't uncovered anything like that yet. Sergeant Vepper probably wouldn't like this very much, uh, but seeing as how he's not here, and, uh, well, I am, I think I'm going to take a chance here uh, and asking you for, for some help. Oh, you got the right guys. Well, I I'm being reassigned uh, until Sergeant Vepper has, has recovered. None of what I'm asking you to do is technically going to be sanctioned by the city guard. Now, I will certainly go to bat for you should any, you know, any trouble arise or you have any additional altercations with other uh, officers. And I certainly will take the fall, but this is something that, uh, under the discretion of uh, my superiors, I cannot pursue myself, unfortunately, this time. But I believe that it is something worth pursuing. First of all, is Sergeant Vepper going to be okay? I do believe he will make a full recovery. He's currently being treated at Lathander's Grace Hospital. Mm. Okay. Maybe we'll go visit... But no, we shouldn't visit him, right? Because we're undercover. Uh, perhaps uh, reducing any additional association with a member of the Guard may uh, aid you in what I'm going to ask you to do here. Third of all, before you ask us, mm -hmm. can I create my own team? I know people that can do stuff. Not just these two guys. Oh, I, I see. And how many additional team members would you be requiring? Well, it's mostly one person that identifies as multiple people. Oh, uh, I see. And their name would be? And he's like ready to scratch it, to write down a name. Um, can I have discretion and tell you later? Uh, well, I, I suppose uh, that's a little unorthodox, but uh, this entire situation is a little unorthodox, uh, to be fair. Yeah, you can trust her. The more people you add to the team that I may be unaware of, uh, that I may be unaware of, are, are just more people that I may not be able to help in the event that something goes wrong with uh, your own investigation. Okay, okay, okay. Continue. Sorry. Again, nervous. I believe finding this fake Ike could be the thing that breaks the whole case wide open. If oh. they're still in danger, we may be able to use them. Uh, I don't like to use the term bait, and I certainly wouldn't use that term with them, but perhaps they can aid us in this investigation as well. 
Now, did you get any other uh, additional information from him? Uh, a name or uh, where he lives or anything like that? He gave me the name Lonnie. One name only, no last name. Um, he appeared just as Ike. He was human, um, kind of wore a cloak and looked like Ike. And I told him he can find me at Toggles and Sprockets, but hasn't followed up as quickly as you guys. So if he's in trouble, he may actually just end up coming here anyways. Um, but if the trouble finds him before he can, that could be bad news. We met for but a moment, but I have a trustworthy face. Uh, yes, uh, it's probably something to do with that pink hair. Uh, very uncommon. I've been told that before. And recognizable. It's my own recipe. Yeah, it's my own recipe. All right, I get it. Are you telling me I should dye my hair if I'm going undercover? Because I could. Well, uh, that may be a good idea if you uh, still want to maintain a low profile. What's the best low profile hair color? Well, I don't know. Perhaps just a simple brown or maybe a black. Uh, maybe even, I don't know. Ugh, so boring. Okay. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's it may be boring, but in the business of espionage, it could be mandatory, you know. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for the job. Okay, well, uh, I mean, I, I appreciate that. As I was saying, I'll leave that up to your discretion as well as the composing the rest of your team. But I don't believe it is an uncommon practice for uh, an impersonator or perhaps a, a stand-in, you may say, to be hired by one of the founding families in social events, uh, especially if perhaps the founding families get wind of a potential threat that my superiors would also be made aware of, but of course, I'm simply a constable, uh, which is why I need to go through some of these more back channels to get this job done. Speak clearly, because I'm getting confused. What I mean to say is that this Lonnie was most likely, perhaps, a member of the Virtuoso co Cooperative. I mean, they have all types of artist types, actors, tinkerers such as y you and your family. They may be even registered with the Virtuoso Cooperative Guild. So, perhaps you can find them there. Without any additional information, I'm afraid I, I, I can't convince my superiors uh, to aid me in asking them for their records or, or, or uh, you know, obtaining some type of search warrant uh, to inspect the guild hall for perhaps Lonnie is hidden out there. He may be a member of the Troop de Loop Academy. Uh, I, I do not know, but I think these would be great places for you to start. Perhaps you could infiltrate the Troop de Loop Academy uh, in the guise of being aspiring actors or artists, painters, whatever, again, to your discretion. But unfortunately, I don't have the manpower or the means to do this myself. So we need to find Lonnie. We need to get sneak in a troop to loop, find Lonnie, and then we're going to have to convince him to be bait? Well, uh, at the very least, I, he needs to be put into protect protective custody until this creature can be either captured or killed. Right, okay. Um, how do I get a hold of you? Where's our secret spot? I mean, I don't really have a secret spot. Uh, I mean, perhaps we could work out a secret spot. I mean, we could decide on one. Uh, do you have a, a particular place in mind? I mean, I'm usually all over the city with my duties. I mean, if you need somewhere remote, Lee Han's carriage is pretty out there. No, that's not a bad idea, actually. Um... Unless that looks suspicious. I don't know, I'm, I'm new to this undercover thing. You tell me what to do. Obviously, dye my hair. <laughs> Number one. And, uh, Mr. Tread, this uh, Lee Hand can uh, uh, provide us with the discretion that we may need uh, to use their current carriage services as some type of base of operations, should that arise? Well, uh, I, you know, I can't fully sh uh, speak for Lee Hand, but we usually see eye to eye, and I, th I think, you know, if he understands that it's... For a good cause, helping out. Yeah, he owes me. I saved his life. He's kind of old. He might forget. It's fine. Well, what I, what I mean to say is, I, yeah, I, I think I think we can count on that. Well, consider that uh, to be our, our meeting spot then, should the need arise. He kind of looks to Rumkey. You've been rather quiet, sir, Mr. Rumkey. Oh yeah, just just listening in. I'm I'm just here, uh, you know, taking in the information. I do have one thing to tell you, Constable. Have you have you? I live up in the den. And I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot of Trinity folks uh, scurrying around up there. That might be your bombing people. Have you looked into that any? Oh, that's a, you know what? I, I, I've I noticed a lot of Trinity going up there too, uh, Rumkey. That's, I hadn't even thought of that, but they could be prime suspects. Yeah, they need to go back to the Quarrelers, where they're from. 
Right, right. Well, well, as I said, uh, this latest bombing as of last night uh, certainly has something to do with the Trinity. Uh, but to connect them to what happened on Founders Day, we have no evidence as of yet. Uh, you're telling me you have some potential uh, additional information? Can you tell me anything about the activities in the Denizen? Uh, no, I just you just told me about it. But you said uh, there was a bomb. I mean, that's a connection. The bomb's going off. You have three of them now, right? Things happen in threes, I hear. Well, yes, I have heard that uh, superstition uh, as well. Uh, now, let's hope that that perhaps that means that these attacks will come to an end. Uh, perhaps this investigation will lead nowhere. Perhaps Lonnie is not in any danger at all. Yeah, that would be the best case scenario if this goes nowhere. I agree. Yeah, I think, I think the thing that was trying to kill him sort of stopped trying to kill him once it found out it wasn't one of the founders. So maybe uh, they don't care about uh, old Lonnie there at all. I mean, that may be true, but I'm just taking every precaution. As I say, every Capian is a uh, Capian worth saving. It's what I always say. That's my mantra. When I wake up in the morning, I repeat that to myself every time I don my guard uniform. It's a good one. Yeah. That's, uh, that's I something. mean, if anything, we'll get some, uh, get some acting skills under our belt. I'm pretty excited about that. I like feeling like a spy. That's cool. But yeah, my little, I think I can get a group, a tight group of four together and we'll uh, see what we can do. You know where to find me. Excellent. I thank you all. And again, this is not officially a sanctioned task force that we've assembled here. Um, but I will go to bat should anything arise or any trouble come up with the city's guard. Rest assured, I care about you as much as I do every other Capian in this city. So if we get captured by the city guard, we tell them, we know you. Go talk to Constable Lilton. Correct. Constable Happy Lilton. Happy. Oh, I love that first name. That's awesome. Oh, well, I uh, thank you very much. Um, and he will nod to each of you. And you see this whole time, like, Flint is just sitting, in, he's sitting in his office chair. He's just, like, shaking his head back and forth. And he's, like, <laughs> physically, like, preventing himself from, like, speaking out. Kylie, you hear you know you're hearing this exchange uh, perfectly well at the door, and obviously the the constable's about to leave. I imagine you're scampering out of the way. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, back out, uh, looking like somebody's just browsing the shop. I go to comfort my dad, and I say, "It's going to be fine. It's fine." He says, "There's no way you're going to be doing this." We're going to an artist academy. What could go wrong? Wait, what, what's this creature? You didn't tell us about this creature. It's fine. What do you mean it's fine? What? What's the th about the heads and the... He, like, looks at Hellcrack. What are you getting my daughter into? The two of you? It's not them. Dad, we were at the parade. It's fine. Hey, uh, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be talking to your, to your mom about this. Hellcrack kind of, um, look, looks down, feeling a little bit... A little bit guilty for being called out as a bad influence. Helia walk into the office. Don't worry, Mr. Toggle Sprocket. We'll take good care of Opal. Just like we always do. Can you, okay, Kylia, can you roll me a, a persuasion roll with advantage, please? 22. Oh, yeah. So, I, again, you being uh, close friends with Opal and the Toggle Sprockets certainly know you, Kylia, and they do like you. I imagine they've never heard Seisha Dahl speak. No. <laughs> so they believe that Kylia is a good influence. On Oval. <laughs> Don't quite know what she's saying. Doll. We, as in the group. <laughs> exactly. That's right. <laughs> so, your words do kind of, he does kind of se seem to feel better that knowing at least Opal will be with friends of whatever she's out, out doing. And you kind of like placate him. And he, he still kind of like storms out of the office, though, clearly going off to find Ruby to, to fill her in on, on what just happened. And I just, in a huff. <sighs> I'm an adult. They're never gonna... They're never gonna let me... Don't <sighs> dye your hair. We can find you a hat. A nice big hat that'll cover it all up. And you just always wear the hat when we're doing our business. My sneaky hat? <laughs> yeah. We'll get you a sneaky hat. I feel like artists... Like, what if they want me not to wear a hat? Like, for acting and stuff. Tell them you're having a bad hair day. <sighs> I'll think about it. It just seems like a liability. I had to lie. I had to lie. It gets easier. Hey, by the way, we didn't... We didn't say your name, Kylia. So, about the bomb in the den, when I accidentally yelled your name... Yeah, you did so good! 
I know. We're so proud of you. Thanks. Okay. So, guys, are you excited to go to art school? Eh, I'm not excited, but we should probably get going. Do we still want to go to the park? Yeah, we should probably sort this out before we go any further. Luckily, uh, the old constable there didn't want to look in your sack. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, like, holding it. <laughs> it's not like he has a min detector. You need a min detector. Yeah, yeah no, no, well, well What's a we can talk about this uh, uh, somewhere a bit quieter, but... In the park. Yeah. Plus, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they need you know, some sort of, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, they can't just look in your bags without uh, good reason, you know. Really? That's illegal. Yeah, I know my rights. Huh. <laughs> I don't know what I <laughs> don't know what they're called, but I know them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get going. Can we stop and get a Danish somewhere? I'm parched. I'm hungry. I'm hungry and parched. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound delicious. <laughs> so the four of you can easily stop in at the pickled almond uh, before hitting up the green space uh, that uh, leads to the entrance of, of the hedge maze. So you want to find a you get something to drink, something to eat up for the go, and you want to find a nice quiet spot in in the park um, to kind of divvy up the items. Is there anything else that you want to discuss? You want to plan? Yeah, you have a, have a nice little picnic before you. Five of you. Apologies, say Chanel. <laughs> um, I will. I will take the time to explain. The min number situation to say should all or <laughs> to Kylia and uh, Rumpke. So, so you're saying everything is got, magic's got this number on it? I guess in the well, not I guess, but like in the city, like legally, like the legit stuff. And all this stuff on it got the number taken off of it. Mm-hmm. So who can do a thing like that? Mm-hmm. You think these uh, the Ark in this place will? Uh, confiscate these things if we take it to them and ask them? I mean, sounds like we're taking stolen goods to them. They're, they're not really ours. They, they would definitely confiscate them. Yeah. I mean, I know a guy. My mom could talk to, well, she was going to talk to a clerk who could give us a discount on, like, replacing the nim. so ugh, the min, the min nim. Why don't we pick one of these things we don't want as much and test it out with it, you know, say, what do we do about this? And if they take it from us, then we don't even mention the other stuff. Mm. That's, not, that's not a bad idea. And then again, if they say uh, it's cool and they can reestablish to it, we throw the, throw the whole bag up on the table. It's illegal to have unmarked items. Yeah, but they're going to remark them for us, potentially. At least that's what my mom said. She said I could have the circlet if they put the thingy on it. They'll want to know why they're not marked, and then they'll take it from us. Yeah, the guards ask a lot of questions and stuff. The sergeant really listened to me. That was crazy good notes. Wow. Yeah, but I, what do you think the, what's the, uh, what's the word? The ramifications, uh, re repercussions, some, what, what kind of trouble are we going to get into if we don't have any marks on these things? I'm wearing this circlet. People know I tinker. They see the circlet, they think I made it. How, like, no one's going around with a min detector, you know? The only time that we'll get in trouble is if we try to take the objects to a place where they know that they're not right. And they will take mm -hmm. it from us and they'll put our names on a list. And they will question us as to where the object came from. And if they have been previously used in illegal activities, we would look very suspect. So if we keep them, can we use them? I mean, people will see us walking around with the stuff on. People see people walking around with stuff all the time. We don't see how we're any different. Carly, you seem to uh, you seem to know a lot about how this whole process works. Uh, She's always taking stuff for Zelma. Oh, duh. that's true. Yeah, I guess in your line of work. Uh, we, yes, we find things that people may have temporarily lost track of. Yeah, 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 sure, of course. And we found these on a carriage. I think we'd take one of them to the Arcanist Academia place. Just find out who it belongs to. And if they take that piece, no harm, no foul, right? We could keep all the other stuff. But at least we'll know who, uh, who actually owns it. You can do that. Who, me? I'm talking about Opal's. If she has all the right reasons to have it. They could have brought it into a shop or something. I thought you were good at lying. I'm kind of new to it. 
Oh, well, that would appease your mother if you took at least one piece. You did promise her you would talk to the guy. <sighs> okay, what are we willing to part with? Is the uh, Arcanist Academia on the way? If you are looking at Kate's map, you're actually very, very close uh, in this little park and garden area um, at the Hedge Maze's opening. The Arcanist Academia is in the Cognition District. Just, just east. Yeah, but probably less than a mile east um, of kind of where you've you've set down for your, for your picnic. I mean, you all you all certainly obviously know uh, what the Arcanist Academia do. They essentially just uh, manage all the sources of magic, whether that's um, items or um, schools uh, for magic. They also uh, are in charge of managing the, the, the lunar lamps that keep the growth of the forest uh, at bay. They also oversee the, the management of the hedge maze itself, which is, of course, comprised and it was planted from seedlings from the forest, which is what gives it its shifting abilities to, to slowly change over time. You want me to go alone? Or are you coming with me? Oh, we'll all go. I got some questions to ask these guys anyway. And I sort of hold my arm out. Look at my tat. It just sort of came back last night. What? Look at it. It's all nice and new. Maybe that's some kind of magic or something. Did somebody re-tattoo you? Unless they did a really good job while I was sleeping. No. I know I took the tattoo kit, but it wasn't me. Are you a heavy sleeper? I don't know, I'm sleeping. Okay, so we go together, and it makes more sense that Hilcra comes too, because he's part of the, you know, the carriage story. We can all go. All right, I take the circlet off, and I put it back in the bag. We're gonna, sh what, sh what item are we bringing? We should leave the rest of the items somewhere else. So, I have a secret hiding spot in the hedge maze. I could just leave the bag there. Why don't you keep it in your room? Because there's other people in my house. It's much safer in the maze. Her siblings get into everything. They, they really have no personal space. They all kind of are just everywhere all the time. I get you. Frank's the same way. I haven't been there in a long time, but my friend Maeve and I, we had a secret hideout built into the hedge maze. I just have to look for the signs because, you know, it shifts and stuff, so... If you give me time, I can put the bag back. Let's head to your place, and then we'll take a we'll take this uh, this amulet, and I sort of reach in the bag. And how about this thing? We'll take that, and we'll ask them about it. Why don't we first ask what they would do with things without one of these numbers on it, and then if they say they're going to confiscate it, we just don't say anything at all. Well, how about that for an episode? You want more? I'm sure you do. I'm just the guy to tell you where to find it. Just type in encourageableparty.com in your favorite interweb searcher thingy, and bam, there you go. What's that? You want even more stuff to know about the world? Well, you can do that at World Anvil. Just go over to worldanvil.com slash w slash center dash Leland Steele. And there's all kinds of stuff there. All you gotta do is get a free account. I bet you were wondering about the great tunes that were filling your ear holes while you were listening. Well, that was tabletop audio and serastral music. Great stuff. You want to make us feel good? Then join our Discord. Talk about all kinds of stuff there. Sometimes even the podcast. You got some spare change there burning a hole in your pocket? Well, then join our Patreon at patreon.com slash encourageableparty. Head over there and see what kind of perks you get. But most of all, tell your friends. Tell the mailman. Tell that guy you met at the gym last week. Tell them how you went into your app thingy and uh, give us a five-star review. Then more people can find us and enjoy the show, too. Okay, now that I'm done being a shill, there's only one more thing to say. And that's happy adventuring. This has been a Sounds of Steel production.